Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and we are making some fun Arduino games using the Elegoo Uno. An Arduino Uno will work great for this. We're just working out of that Elegoo Uno starter kit. We've got the shield on top of the Elegoo Uno to try to make this a little bit smaller and our wiring will be slightly different than what we did in our Tinkercad Circus tutorial, but not too much. We are going to be using three push buttons, a red, yellow, and green LED. We're gonna use a buzzer, um, some resistors, and some jumpers. And I also have my smaller jumper cable kit available for us. So let's get started. This is our final circuit that's on the screen right now. And we can get started by just adding in our LEDs. So we're gonna add our LEDs in. Make sure you know where the short leg is. So here is my long leg on the top and my short leg on the bottom. And I usually like to keep my short legs towards the left-hand side of the board. I find if I always do that, it will sort of always be the same. So I'm going to do that for my red, my yellow, and my green. All right, and we can change sort of where these guys, the spacing of these, maybe we space them out ever so slightly more like this so that there's, I've got three boxes between each LED right there. All right, so let's do that as our spacing for it. And then we're gonna add our buttons. Now, instead of jumping over this, because then we would not have enough sort of columns to get everything and keep everything separated, we're actually gonna put our buttons completely on the bottom. So normally you can jump the top and the bottom with those buttons, and that's totally fine. It just connects the pins on the top and the bottom. But the top and the bottom are completely independent. So we can put our buttons all the way on the bottom and save ourselves some space. So your buttons, when you put them in, you can put them, I'm gonna put it right next to the LED. It should only span one extra bubble. So if you have these sort of rotated differently, you might span two extra bubbles. You don't want that, you want it to only span one. If you have it spanning two, you're gonna be connecting your button up in the wrong way. So make sure it's only spanning one and not two. So it should span two going vertically instead of horizontally. All right, so we're gonna put our buttons in right underneath these little LEDs right here that we've got going on. And it looks like I've got two columns in between all of my buttons, and this is looking really great. If I wanted to, I could cut these legs down so it'll be a little bit more secure later. That's something you can do after you make your circuit work, and it's really happy. Here's our piezo buzzer. Make sure when you put your piezo buzzer in, you check, you'll notice that there is a little tiny plus side that is etched in. These are like LEDs, they're like one-way streets, so we need to know which one is which. I'm gonna put my plus on the top, and this one I am going to jump, and I'm gonna put it in the very last column, all right? So I'm gonna jump this gap on the very last column with my little plus sign on the top. All right, now we've got, this is all of our circuit components that are added into the circuit, and we just need to wire things up. So we're gonna go from ground through resistors to each of these LEDs. So I have all these little resistors right here. And you can take three of them out. And if you'd like to, you could actually sort of pre-cut these resistors. Oops, I got four. Pre-cut these resistors so they're not quite as long. And to prepare your little resistors, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make them into a staple like this. And then you can cut these legs shorter. Now you don't want to cut them too, too short, but you can cut them a little shorter. Now this ground is always going into the short leg of the resistor. So what I could do is I could actually sort of choose this to be the ground and then put the short legs of those resistors into that hole. So for example, for the first one, for red, I would actually want this to be really, really short because it only needs to span those three little guys. So I'm going to make this really short like that. Oh, I might have made it too short. Let's do that again. So I'm going to fold my little resistor. I'm going to cut these legs off just like that. And then I'm going to actually, since it's so short of a distance I'm spanning, I'm going to have to, it's going to be like a little bit of a heart right there for me. All right. And we can get these guys. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to, yeah, no, this will be, this is good. Let's see. We can go at a diagonal. I think that might work even better. So we're going to go to the top of that guy and go all the way. Let's see. Can we, how close can we get it? There we go. 
All right, so that little resistor is going from the short leg of the LED. So that's the left-hand leg of my LED. And it's going into this row, which we're gonna connect into ground. All right, if I find my red doesn't work great, I'm a little bit worried about how bumpy that is. Um, it might be a problem, it might not. We will find out. All right, so my yellow, I need to span a different distance. And I can measure that like this. I need to span that distance, but I do wanna take some of this height off. You see how high it is. And that I can do with these scissors. And I can just cut off some of that excess like that. All right, is that all the way in? There we go. Now we're in. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing for up here on the green. And green spans, again, a slightly different distance. It is spanning all the way from here to here. So if I make my sort of staple the right length to start with, then I can just cut the legs off to where I need to go. All right, so we're gonna cut these legs off ever so slightly, just to help it be a little bit further down. Plug that little resistor in, just like that. All right, so now I need to plug a ground into here. So I can take one of my jumper cables that I have, and I have an extra hole right here I can start there and I can just end in ground. There's a really convenient ground that is right next door. And then all of these guys will be hooked into ground for me. The next thing I want to do is I want to do the same thing of hooking all of these buttons to ground through a resistor. So I'm going to take three more resistors out. And now I'm using 100 ohm resistors. You don't have to have a huge resistance there. Don't put it to be too big though, because if you put it too big, then a, nothing will get through. All right, so here are my other three resistors. I'm also gonna hook these into ground, which is this same spot conveniently. I think I actually even have one extra hole right here. If I would like to use that to maybe jump down here and then make this one also ground. The other option is I have a ground rail that's right here and that might work even better for me, just connecting all these guys straight to the ground rail. I think that's what I'm going to do. Now this little guy, this piezo buzzer is in the way when I wire that, so I'm just gonna take that out for a moment and we'll plug that back in. I am going to choose to always wire the closest leg to the ground of my piece into ground. And this one, we're gonna go to the bottom ground to give us a little bit more space. So we're gonna go like this for this one, we'll go to the bottom piece of that ground rail, but I am going to cut some of the length off of that. And we'll plug this guy in. There we go. So now you see it's a lot shorter, which makes our circuit seemingly a lot more bearable. All right, and then we're gonna plug this next one in, into ground. And let's see, we'll get our right height and then we will, or right sort of width, I guess, that's maybe a better word for it. And then we will cut those legs off and plug it in. Again, I'm using the closest piece of that um, button, the closest pin of that button. And then we are going to plug this guy in, just like that, and that guy will be happy. All right, oops, I got the middle button or the middle pin, which is connected to nothing. That's not gonna work for us. So we need to pull that out and make sure we are on the actual part where those pins come out, which is also where those little black dots are. That's really, really important. All right, and then the last one, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we've been doing. And come here and we will go right over into this ground rail. All right. There we go. So now we have our three resistors. They're all going into sort of the rightmost pin of the button, and then they are all going into ground. So now we need to wire our buttons into five volts, and we can do that. We have a five volt rail, and I think I'm gonna do that just with the bigger jumpers. And we'll plug in 
to the other part, the other side of your button, so the leftmost side, and then straight into the five volts that's on the Arduino. So we'll find another red jumper and we'll plug in to the leftmost side of our button, which is right where these black dots are. So I can plug in right here and into those five volts as well. And then we need to do that one more time for this last button. So we will grab it from right here, plug it in right above there and into our power. All right, we're gonna have a lot of wires here. It's going to get a little bit crazy, but that's okay, because it's gonna be fun when we get to play this game. So we can plug it back our little piezo buzzer, we can plug that guy back in. It's gonna go right across on that last spot. All right, and we can plug the ground into ground, and the ground is this side, the plus side, you can kind of see it in that reflection, is on the top. So the ground is this bottom one, and we want to plug that into ground. So we'll come here, and we'll plug this right into the ground rail of our Arduino. And that will ground our piezo buzzer for us. Now we want to plug in our LEDs, and we want to plug them into our Arduino. We're plugging the long leg. I'm going to use a white jumper for my red because if I use red, I might get confused later on. So I'm going to plug that into the long leg of the LED. That's the one that's not going to ground or the leg that's sort of more to the right. And it looks like red goes into pin three. So I'm going to come over here, zero, one, two, three. All right, and then I'm going to plug the yellow one in. I'm going to find the short leg of my yellow, which is right up here, onto the right-hand side, and that goes into pin four for me. And in fact, I think I'm gonna move this white wire up to the top, just so that we don't have as much right in the way of our project. So we sort of have our buttons down below and these guys on top. And then I need to wire the green one, again, not the one where the resistor is going into, that's the ground for the green, it's the one to the right of that, and that will go into pin two. All right, so there are those wires plugged in, so our LEDs are plugged into our board, but our buttons aren't, so we need to plug our buttons into the board as well. I'm gonna use similar colors for the buttons so that if we have to troubleshoot, I'll know where things are going. Now we're gonna plug the button off of the part that went from the resistor into ground. So that's gonna be <coughs> on, <coughs> excuse me, on this side right here. And it looks like we don't have a spot. We can shove this guy in there. Let's see if we can fit it in. Oh, we have just slightly not enough. There we go. If you press really, really hard, it will go in. I put it in with the button leg, so those two are now attached. And the red button is going into pin, let's see, nine. So we're gonna plug this into pin nine. Like that. Then we're going to do our, or our yellow button is next. So here is our yellow button. I'm gonna plug it in right there. Gotta push really, really hard. It's not as happy. There we go. And the yellow button, which is colored a little funny in this one, is gonna go into pin 11. Let's double check this. Oop, nope, pin 10. That makes more sense. I was gonna say, they look like they're right next to each other. And last but not least is our green, and that is gonna go from our button. Again, the rightmost button terminal. Let's plug that in, it pushes really hard, and that goes into pin eight. All right, so I've got these guys, these red, yellow, greens are all going in to the right-hand side of those button terminals, which is also where these little resistors are going into, and then I have the reds from the five volts going into the left-hand side of those buttons. I've got the ground going into the piezo, and I've got these red, green, yellow wires right here, these guys are for my LEDs, and they're going into the right-hand side of the LEDs, and I've got all these little resistors 
going there. Now the last thing that we have is we don't actually haven't plugged in our piezo buzzer and we want to do that. I'm going to plug that in with blue instead of orange. You're going to go from the top of your piezo buzzer. So our piezo is plugged into this row right here, this column right here, and we're going to plug in to that column and our piezo goes into pin seven. And that is all the wiring that we need to do for this memory game. Um, there's lots of wires here, but we'll still be able to see the colors and hear the tones as it plays. So now we're going to plug it into our um, computer and load up the code. So if you go over to your Arduino IDE and you open up a new sketch, you're going to see some stuff that comes up. We're going to delete all of that and we are going to delete or we're going to paste in our code that we looked at. This is from the University of Wyoming, so you can find this on their website. You can also find this over at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. It is a lot of code. In our Tinkercad Circus tutorial, we went through block by block explaining what all of this code does. So if you're curious about that, you will want to go check it out in there. So now I'm going to plug my board in. I'm going to plug it into my computer, and we are going to upload this onto the board for the code. All right, so you heard the little siren, which is our play winner button to test that everything works. And if we don't do it within a certain amount of time, it's gonna be hap as unhappy. Let's see. And we can play this game and we have to remember the thing. And if we don't, if we get it wrong, it tells us, nope, you are wrong. And it will keep allowing us to play that little memory game as long as we want to. It's a lot of crazy wiring on the board. Um, and if you wanted to, you could use like the normal side, slightly bigger breadboard. But I like this because it's really portable. And once you get it wired up, you can actually see those LEDs really, really well. It's not a problem. Um, and then you can sort of, it's almost like a little portable gaming system. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this project. I hope we see you for some other Tinkercad circuits and breadboard circuits tutorials, as well as all of our fun making projects. Again, you can find us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope to see you soon. Bye, friends.